what that means is when you were growing up, especially in the early years of infanthood, what would have happened is your parents were inconsistent. Either you had one loving parent and one distant parent, or what may have happened is you had a loving mother, but she'd be inconsistent, very loving one minute and caring. But then the moment you do something she doesn't like, she would withdraw her love. She might give you the silent treatment or she might punish you or she might not. She might favor a sibling over you, whatever it is. It led you to believe that at some point in time, whoever loves you is going to leave you. They're going to love you and leave you, love you and leave you. So what happens is in adult relationships, um, outside of adult relationships, you tend to be quite put together and you're okay. But the moment you start falling in love, your brain starts to work out how and when this person is going to leave you. They're going to leave you at some stage. And then you almost try and predict and control the elements that may lead to them withdrawing from you. So you will start enter a relationship and assume at some point they're going to cheat on you or at some point they're going to hurt you. And what you'll do is the moment you get together with them, you launch your investigation. You start to look for evidence that this person is not right for you. But in the process of looking for that evidence, you start to get preoccupied with them and you form an, a bit of an obsession. So you're getting more attached. So you're digging for gold. You're digging for that, you know, that evidence that this person's wrong for you. But in that process of digging, you become so invested in that person that you're now super attached to this person. And you're, only they can soothe you. So you might get really, really anxious and you might be stressed and you might be like thinking, when am I going to hear from them? When am I and only when you get a text from them, only when you get a phone call from them, does your anxiety drop and you can finally breathe again. But when there's separation, the anxiety increases, 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 only drops when you hear from them. So you live in this constant state of heightened anxiety with your partner and you only feel calm when you're connected. You don't feel calm outside of that. And when you're not connected and there's been separation for however long, your brain will start to go to the worst case scenario. If, for example, you haven't heard from them all day or if they've been busy or whatever it is, your brain won't simply assume that they're just busy. Your brain will start to think they're doing this, they're doing that, and then you start your investigation. You start looking for things, you start asking about them, you start checking when they're online. You can't stop. And this happens. And as a result, in your desperate attempt to kind of keep this person or control this person, you almost self-sabotage. Because by the time you do hear from them, you've got all this built up anger and resentment and accusations. And this person is maybe just busy and just heard from you after a long day and might be looking forward to seeing you. But because you've got all this anger and resentment, they can't navigate you. They don't know where this is coming from. You almost punch them in the in, in the gut with all of these accusations or all this anger, all this resentment, all this, uh, you know, stress that they didn't know that they caused. So you end up always fighting. And in that process of trying to love them and trying to stay connected to them, you actually end up pushing them away. And this seems to be the common theme with anxious attachment styles. So if that sounds like you and it sounds like your behavior, then chances are you have this anxiety and chances are you're always going to find yourself in these eruptive relationships. Now, I'm going to give you a few tips on what you can do to resolve this anxiety that you have regarding relationships. The first one for anxious attachment style, the very first thing that you need to do is stop the protest behavior. Now, what protest behavior means is when you have relationship anxiety, you seem to feel very uncomfortable expressing your true needs and expressing what you want. So what you do is you play games. You try and do the exact opposite of what you truly want in order to get your needs met. And so what I mean by this is what protest behavior basically means is if I want to spend more time with my partner and I haven't seen them in a while, what I will do is post on Instagram that I'm really busy and I'm with my friends. So they think that I'm busy. You're doing the opposite of what you want. What you truly want is to spend time with them. But what you're going to do now is pretend that you're busy. So you're not going to get what you truly want. Another thing that protest behavior might look like is I want my partner to be really loyal and loving and I want them to label it with us because I don't like being in a situation without labels. Instead of saying that, you might pretend you're going on dates with other guys. You might start following other girls on Instagram. You might show that you're so single. You might pretend that you're super, super independent just to kind of get a reaction, just to make them jealous. So instead of communicating your true needs, you do the exact opposite opposite hoping they'll be able to read between the lines and give you a reaction and then you can feel safe again 
But in the process of this protest behavior, you get exactly what you didn't want out of that relationship. You get the exact wrong response. And then you end up almost hurting yourself with this protest behavior. So you want to stop the protest behavior. Stop doing the opposite of what you truly want. Stop posting and pretending you're out when you're truly home, hoping that they come home on time. Stop pretending that you love being single and you love your independence when really you want a commitment, committed relationship. Stop pretending and replace this protest behavior with effective communication. What I mean by this is every time you get a trigger, which anxious attachments get triggered all the time, instead of getting angry and saying, oh God, I don't even know why I'm with you. I don't even want this relationship. Replace it with, I'm feeling uh, unsure, I'm feeling insecure. I prefer a relationship where we know where we stand and we, we have labels. And I don't really like the idea that, you know, you're seeing other people and I'm seeing other people. It's not what I'm comfortable with. So let me know what you think. You replace what you are pretending to be with what your true needs are. Now, anxious people tend to be terrified of doing this. They think, if I do this, I'm going to put them off, they're going to run away from me, and I'm going to look really needy. So... So if you express your needs and it puts them off and they run away, you've lost the person who was never compatible with your true needs anyway. You've speeded out the outcome. You want a committed relationship. This person doesn't. By telling them you want a committed relationship, you get the answer to your questions way faster. And you save yourself the rigmarole of all the protest behavior and all the game playing and all the pretending to be cool. And you get what you truly want out of life. And you gain self-esteem. The 